God, the bike just feels smooth right there. There you go. Yeah, I think so. Man, this trail just doesn't let up. Hey guys, welcome back to MTB Yum Yum. My name is Jason and I produce the YouTube channel MTB Yum Yum where I try to ride as many mountain bikes as I can get my hands on and share my experience with you. It is March of 2023 and although it's winter in Salt Lake City, Utah, I was able to get down to Southern Utah where it's a desert and we're able to ride bikes during the off season, during winter. Yeah. <laughs> and I was lucky enough to get out on the Yeti SB140. Uh, this bike just came out a few months ago, and for those of you who follow the channel, I used to own and ride the Yeti SB130 Lunch Ride, which uh, was around before this bike came out. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that old bike. Obviously, I'll tell you what's new about the Yeti SB140 in today's video, and uh, kind of compare it to some of the other bikes in the category. I've spent a ton of time on the Ibis Ritmo, the Pivot Switchblade, the Specialized Stump Jumper, and like the list goes on. This is like this mid-travel trail bike is kind of the quintessential trail bike that most of you and most people I see out on the trails riding. Pfft, I was blown away with how good this was compared to the previous Yeti SB130. So real quick, with just, uh, just going into a few details, it has a 77 degree seat tube angle on the Lunch Ride Edition, which is just really putting a 160 millimeter fork up front. And it has about a 65 degree head tube angle. Um, I'm five foot eight, 145 pounds, and I ride a size medium almost always. That was the case on the 140 today. And it has a 460 millimeter reach. Um, so it's really not that different in terms of overall geometry from the previous Yeti SB130 lunch ride. Uh, 140 uh, millimeters out back with a float uh, X2 shock. And then like I said, a Fox 36, 160 millimeters up front. Um, that's one of the things I'm just gonna mention really quick is the previous Yeti SB130, when it came out way back in like, oh geez, was it 2018 or maybe 2019? Uh, it was like way ahead of its time in terms of like modern uh, long, low and slack geometry. And so they didn't have to change a whole lot on this bike in terms of geometry. The things that they changed are uh, small, but they actually made a big deal in my experience riding it the week that I was down in St. George. So first thing to note, now all Yeti SB140s come with a universal derailleur hanger. They changed up the switch infinity link, which is the way that uh, all Yetis, um, that's the way their suspension works. It's called Switch Infinity. It's this little Kashima coated shock uh, piston uh, down there. They also updated the bearings in there. I don't know all about it. Click the link down below and you can go read way more information from the marking department and the engineers over at Yeti, but it's changed and updated. Um, the other thing is that it got size specific uh, chainstay length. So um, on a size medium, the chainstays are going to be shorter than if, if it was on a large or an extra large. So that makes sense, right? Uh, the other thing is the frames, um, how stiff the frame is, is uh, changes in between the sizes. So a size small frame or medium frame won't be as stiff as a large or extra large on these new Yeti bikes. And I think that's a, a really important and innovative thing that Yeti's starting to do. I feel like I noticed that out on the trail and I'll share that later in the video when I compare this bike to the previous Yeti SB130. Real quick, today's video is sponsored by Lab Austere Hip Packs. I have been using and riding with the Lab Austere Hip Pack for a few years now. They were kind enough to reach out to the channel about three years ago and 
team up with me to offer this uh, hip pack at a discount up to 25% off. The thing I like most about the Lab Austere hip pack is it rides very low off of my back, almost like a construction worker's tool belt. So my back never gets sweaty. There's never stuff shifting around on my back like it would if I was wearing a backpack. The other thing is the water ball location is so accessible, you can just grab it, take a drink and reholster the water bottle back into the uh, spot without ever having to stop your ride. It is the most intuitive uh, pack I've ever ridden with and it's lightweight and minimalist. It just carries the essentials, your tools, uh, any snacks that you need or an extra tube. It's genius. I'm grateful to be teamed up with Lab Austere. They're offering 25% off using uh, promo code YUMYUM at checkout. Check them out in the link down below. If you, if you need to take tools and a water bottle with you anyway, you gotta check out this pack. It just makes a ton of sense. All right, let's talk about the Yeti SB140. First impressions out on the trail, immediately I recognized how efficient this bike felt. I ride a lot of bikes in this kind of 130 to 150 mil category of trail bikes. And I would, man, I would say that this is the most efficient uh, kind of mid-travel trail bike available today. Even more efficient than the Ibis Ritmo or the Pivot Switchblade, which the Pivot Switchblade has probably got to be about on the top in terms of climbing ability. So I kind of break climbing up into two categories, like efficiency, like how efficient does the pedals feel underneath my feet as I'm moving up the trail? You might think of like pedal bob with efficiency. This is highly efficient. The other side of um, climbing is how does the bike get up technical terrain? Let's go! Man, I never get that section. That feels good to get that. Really freaking good. Well, lucky for me, in Southern Utah, we have incredibly technical terrain with highly, um, with like very low traction scenarios. There it is. Let's go! Let's go! Cab! Go, go, go! Yeah, buddy! Nice job on the Sage 140. That a boy, Kev. This bike cleaned almost every single climb that I tr uh, attempted on the first try. It just felt good. It bears down and gets traction, gets right up every climb. It does it quick. I I'm really impressed. I mean, I would love to ride this back to back with the Pivot Switchblade, which in my mind has always been the best climbing mid-travel 29-inch bike. Um, maybe I'll get to that this summer and, and ride these two bikes back to back, but. 10 out of 10 climbing, I, I, was, I was blown away. Um, next is descending. This bike descending, the first thing you'll notice on this bike is how quiet it is. And you might not think that's a huge deal, but a quiet bike gives you an opportunity to really hear the trail, feel the trail, and it's really nice, to, uh, the, the amount of protection that they put on that rear um, chain stay, uh, quieting down that any chain slap, and uh, there's no cables rattling around. It's just a quiet bike, which is really nice. It should be for the price tag, because Yeti bikes are just, they're not getting any cheaper. They just keep getting more expensive. But what you get descending on this bike, um, the way that Switch Infinity link works back here is it gives you this incredibly efficient climbing bike, but then when you turn downhill, it is just so ready for every part of the trail. A ton of mid-stroke support. So like when you're not fully through the stroke bottoming out onto a hard bottom out, before that section is just a ton of support. It just feels really confidence inspiring to want to push and lean up against. That's the next thing I want to mention about this bike. You don't have to ride it as hard as the previous Yeti SB130 or 130 lunch ride. This bike is, in my experience, uh, the week that I rode it, slightly more forgiving and easygoing. I loved riding that the 130, the, the, the previous version of this bike, a lot because when you're really on and firing and just riding it hard, you almost can't find a better bike than that. But if you weren't always on or just um, really uh, firing in all cylinders, the bike would feel pretty demanding. Like it felt like a lot of bike, it really asked a lot of you in terms of rider input. This bike is, in my experience, the first week I had riding it, less demanding, more forgiving, more easy going, which means more accessible to most riders. Um, 
you don't have to be a pro to ride this bike and have a lot of fun, fun on it in my experience. And I think that it comes down to what we talked about previously is how Yeti has changed the carbon layup of this frame to make it um, not as stiff for lighter weight riders like myself. So I think what was going on on that previous 130, the reason why it maybe felt more demanding is it was a stiffer frame. I think this bike, again, on a size medium, 145 pounds, five foot eight, this bike doesn't feel as stiff as the previous 130. Yeti, tell me if I'm wrong, but that's my experience. This feels like a more easygoing bike, more like the Ripmo. And what a great segue to talk about the Ripmo now because the Ripmo has been like the quintessential perfect trail bike. I'd always recommend people to buy a Ripmo. <sighs> this bike does everything the Ripmo does only it does it better in my experience. And I had a Ritmo with me the week I was down in St. George. I switched back and forth between these bikes. I've got a whole video coming out about this bike versus the Ritmo, but I can just tell you in just a few sentences, this bike felt more stable at higher speeds, so not quite as scary as I started getting faster. It kind of made the Ritmo feel twitchy in comparison to this bike, which Twitchy and Ritmo just don't go together. So the fact that this made that bike feel a little more sketchy and a little twitchy just speaks to, to, to what Yeti's doing. And look, I get it, guys. I'm in the bike market with you guys. I recognize that bikes are getting more expensive. Pivot bicycles are kind of getting expensive. These Yetis have always been expensive. But just know that what you get out of this bike you just don't get out of a specialized stump jumper or a YT um, Jeff C Pro or out of a Fazari Delano. It just, it's not the same, not at all. The amount of support and traction that this bike gets out on the trail is second to none. Maybe the pivot switchblade has as much traction as this, but descending down some very technical trails in Southern Utah, I felt like I could do no wrong on this bike, and that's saying a lot. Now, the price tag might not be for everyone. I don't want to get too much into the weeds on price, although these have gotten expensive. But if you want the best there is, and to to you know not let anything limit you or or keep you back, you have to take a good look at this bike because I really think it's contender for one of the best bikes in this category available right now. It's not to say that other bikes like the Ibis Ritmo or the Pivot Switchblade or the Specialized Stump Jumper aren't good and won't let you have a great time, because they will. I'd be happy to be on any one of those four bikes. But uh, this is special, and, and it, you feel it when you're riding. You just feel the quality of it. Um, in terms of fit and finish, just the way the cables go into the frame is just nicer than the Ibis Ritmo or even the Pivot Switchblade. Um, the way that they, they integrate this in and, and also down here, the fit and finish of the whole bike is just, it's just like a piece of art. It's, it's incredible. I love that they still maintain the actual badge on the front of the bike that is uh, bolted or riveted on there. I just think that's classy as opposed to just slapping on some painted, uh, you know, symbol on the front. I, I like that it has a traditional actual head badge. Um, this is the Turks model. Again, I'll link down below to this bike. Um, I purchased this bike from Salt Cycles in Sandy, Utah. Um, I rode their demo bike and I liked it so much. I said, you know, I got to have one of these for this season. Um, I'm really excited to, to put more time on this. Um, Salt Cycles can custom build this. So for me, I prefer uh, Shimano uh, group, uh, group set and brakes. Yeti doesn't sell this bike with Shimano stuff on it. So I, I ordered one of the models that had... Um, uh, SRAM stuff on there and I had uh, uh, Salt Cycles uh, swap it out for me. And so talk to Chris or Courtney or Jason up at Salt Cycles. They can get a full custom build for you, MV bars and wheels to match, whatever you want. Uh, anyway, give them a call and they can get you set up. Uh, I would say the takeaway for me on this bike is that it gives you that, it still gives you that really racy, sporty feeling that the previous Yeti SB130 just had it oozing out of every pore of that bike you know it was just a it was a race bike you know it's still kind of i think it has that dna still they just brought it to you in a more accessible package it's just um i think more people will find this bike more enjoyable to ride a little bit easier going on the downhills not so demanding and i think it has a lot more traction than the previous sb1 130
I think it's really cool. I'm excited for my stinking trails to dry out and the snow to be gone so I can go riding up here in uh, Salt Lake City. But uh, let me know what you thought about the, re the review. If you have any questions, put it down in the comment section below. Um, I know lots of people have different ideas of what a review should share. And if it's something that I missed, put it down in the comment uh, section below. I'm always happy to respond there and I look for those comments. Um, you'll see a follow-up video with this, uh, comparing it directly to the Ibis Ripmo, along with a long-term review probably three or four months from now after I've had a chance to put five or 600 miles on it. Um, I got a bunch of rides on it so far and I just think it's just a good all-rounder. There's so many good bikes right now, it's tough to find a bad one. This might be one of the best ones. Right here, bud. There you go. Kevin doesn't get a ride out here very often. So this is the waterfall on Barrel, for those of you wondering. And it's nice to be able to do this on this bike instead of my race bike <laughs> during True Grit. Yeah, dude! Yeah. <laughs> this bike is so easy to ride this stuff on. Yeah, it's like, just like, let it go. Oh, just let it go. And less brakes, the better on the bumpy. I would love to see what the difference is in riding characteristics between this and the 130 one tried. I kind of feel like I don't have to get as far forward on the bike as I did on the 130 one tried, but it's hard to tell for sure. Yeah. So Kevin, how's the bike? I like it, man. I speak up. I uh I would like to go ride that on the Ripley. Sorry, oh, the Ripmo. The on the Ripmo, Ripmo yeah. Um, but something about the Yetis, they just always felt good to me. They always felt like you're going. Yeah. You're not riding like this. You're, I don't know, aggressive of, feel to them. Of all of my friends, though, I would say you are one of the more aggressive riders. And that doesn't mean fast. That just means no, you are body fast. position, probably. <laughs> but no, but I love it. I love the bike. It suits the way I ride. It climbs way better. I've never had one with carbon wheels. That, like I was saying, climbing, it just coasts up the hill. So I don't feel any bob in the pedal. It's just traction. So efficient. Yep. You I feel really like, like it. yeah, I, I like that too about this bike. In fact, <clears throat> in the spring, I want to ride this back to back with the new SB120 because I, I, I don't know if I can tell a difference. And this has got much heavier, slower rolling tires. And this thing just motors. Like, I'm really impressed. All right, that was fun. Good time. <laughs> that was so freaking fun, man.